What is good everybody? So excited today. The best part of the tip series is here, the mental game. And if you hone your habits inside and outside of the game, you dial discipline and you get the right winning attitudes, you will improve faster with these tips than any of the others combined. Coming off of the hype of HCS Rally, the first HCS event of Halo Infinite this last weekend, it's very clear. Competitive Halo and giant open bracket Halo has a ton of energy behind it. I'm so excited. I got to live through the golden era of MLG and seeing this again, like this renewed energy is so exciting. Whether you're a beginner player looking to just get better to have more fun, an intermediate player who's wanting to climb the ladder, or maybe an advanced player who's ready to step into the competitive world, go to an open bracket, compete online. This tip video and the rest of these tips are exactly for you. I wanna talk first about winning attitudes. You may notice something, pros tend to be really good at games very quickly, and they sometimes can jump between games. Look at Snipe Down or even Formal most recently. These top level competitive players tend to be really good at their games very quickly. And I was talking with a friend and he sort of chalked this up to, well, they just grind, they play six hours a day, of course they'd be good. And while time practicing is important, it is so much more than grinding. There are a lot of players out there who play four or five, six hours a day who don't improve, who are just grinding games to grind games. Whereas when you look at the pros, they tend to get very good and master their craft, even when it's a new title extremely quickly, because they have built over the years a dialed process with the right attitude and insights that allow them to play with a purpose, to play to improve and to practice certain things faster than people who just sit there and grind games out mindlessly. You need to be very intentional. A winning attitude is one that has a process that is always in the back of their mind with every single match that they're playing. Every time they turn on the game, they have an intentional purpose of what they want to do. Whether that's going into customs to practice callouts or potentially rotations with their teammates, or the attitude of knowing that matchmaking is just that, matchmaking. If you're an aspiring competitive player and you're going into solo queue, you should purely be looking at what elements you can improve as a player yourself, not dependent on the random teammates that you're going to get. These are areas where a, a practical, solid insight into the game will give you a winning attitude to help you improve further. The worst thing you can possibly do is just go into matchmaking and grind games aimlessly without thinking about your gameplay, reflecting back on how you're playing and what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. A winning attitude is one that has developed a process, and that process is one these pros and each of these esports has dialed so well that they can get very good at the, these games quickly. Yes, there are skills that translate from Halo to Halo game, or skills that will translate from one competitive FPS to another, but it is so much more than just time put into the game. And the sooner you can accept that, the sooner you can make your practice sessions more meaningful and valuable, and you can improve a lot quicker. So just recognize a winning attitude is not something you can write down on a piece of paper and give to somebody. It is a process that you personally, introspectively, will have to develop and an attitude that you will need to continually cultivate in order to improve. The second tip here is research, learn, and optimize. You need to be watching other players. You need to be doing research to learn callouts, new rotations, new strategies, and you need to be learning how to implement them into your own game through optimization. And that optimization comes by watching back your gameplay like we've done in the first replay review. Thank you guys so much for the support on that series. Watching back your gameplay and seeing where there are areas you can improve, rotations, collapse, flag pulls, routes, etc., that can be implemented are all things that come from a research phase. And this happens outside of playing the game. This is that ongoing pursuit of maybe watching a few pro gameplays each day or turning their stream on and watching a scrim, seeing what's happening in the game, the meta, and what the common strategies are. You always want to be excited when you're getting to play against players above your skill level, because this is going to give you so much more opportunity to improve a lot quicker. When you play with people who are at a higher skill level than you, if you have the right attitude, you will improve so much faster than if you're just beating up on lower skilled players or matching people at about the same level. It really is sort of a sink or swim mentality. And yes, there will be times you go into a full lobby of whether it's like a pro uh, Onyx tier people, or you know, you're going against people who are just solidly better than you, depending on where you're at in the matchmaking ladder. 
And those games where you do get slapped are the best learning opportunities ever. They hurt, they sting the most, and yes, you need to take the time to step away, watch that replay back. But the research phase is huge for your mental game. Watching this video, you're in the research phase right now. It doesn't hurt to also write down things that you're working on. And those optimizations can also be tied to goals, which again, we've talked about. It'll be here on the channel soon, a proper goal setting video for some long-term growth. Number three, the one that I think everybody tends to do, and that is practice. Whether they practice with an intentional, disciplined way just depends on where you're at. Think about this. I'm trying to talk to this audience as if, you know, some of you are aspiring competitive players. I know some of you went out to this HCS event, and I hope you did awesome. Some of you guys are just picking up the game for the very first time, and some of you have been playing Halo for 10 years. The practice thing comes down to what you want out of the game. You really need to decide what your goal is, your objective, like long term. And if that objective is just to have fun and like enjoy the title more, maybe because you're playing a little bit better, then that's great. You don't have to be like, I have to practice an hour and a half a day or two hours a day. You can just say, I want to play when I play. But if you are somebody looking to push higher and have goals a little bit more competitive, then you will need to practice with a more intentional, scheduled, disciplined fashion. I mean, think about it like a musical instrument. There's some people who just enjoy playing for the sake of playing and they're happy with the level that they're at and they want to maintain it. So they play a few times a week and that's awesome. Then there's people who are wanting to really improve at that instrument and they're practicing every day and they've got a set time for it and they maybe have like a book of stuff that they're working through or some like very specific goals or pieces they're practicing. And then you have the step above that, the people who are practicing with the intent to go out there and gig and perform with others and they are playing a bunch as well as going out there and playing gigs. Think about that as the player who's practicing, scrimming, and then going to either open events or competing online. So practice is something that regardless of your level, you want to be thinking about it. The higher up you are on the rung, the more disciplined, routine, and uh, intentional it needs to be. If you're just trying to have more fun, sure, play a few times a week, but be intentional with the matches that you're playing you'll find that you'll get a lot more improvement out of it. Number four, don't play tilted. I'm guilty of this. Everybody's guilty of this. You lose a game, you get emotional. You queue up again, you lose again. You get even angrier. And before you know it, you're just queuing up automatically, searching for the next win, regardless of how it comes, playing more and more emotionally. And that leads you to play much worse. When you're angry, when you're tilted, you no longer are relying on the logical side of your brain. You're leaning into the chemical response that is that frustration, that emotion, that feeling of, of threatened. And when you lose a game in matchmaking and you are in that fight or flight phase where you're getting an emotional response, you're fearful of losing CSR. You're fearful of not getting the gains that you need you immediately start playing based off of those emotions. And they've done a lot of research. You cannot make solid logical decisions at the skill level you're capable of when you're fully leaning into that emotion. That chemical, that chemical emotion is causing you to play worse. And it is a never ending cycle that is very hard to break out of. And before you know it, maybe you've queued for an hour. You've lost three or four games in a row. You're frustrated and you're even more mad at yourself. I play tilted and I tend to, to lose. And this is something that I learned back when I was doing StarCraft 2. I really wanted to play in Collegiate StarCraft 2. I had to get to Diamond to do so. I'd never played an RTS game before. And so I was very intentional about trying to get to Diamond in like a year and a half or so. And it was tough. And this is where I really learned that tilting is a real thing and something you need to be careful of. If you lose and you get that emotional response, head gets flushed, you get hot, you get really frustrated. The absolute best thing that you can do is step away from the game for three or four minutes, go get some water, maybe get a snack, maybe even watch back the replay, but don't queue up again until you have reached a state of equilibrium. You do not want to go queuing back in all emotional and all angry. You ever notice with these pros, the amazing poker faces that they have, even after taking a loss or doing a great play, very rarely do you see that emotion come through. Good pro players are extremely good at controlling their emotions and putting them aside, even in tough situations where a loss occurs or a lot is on the line. The best way to practice this again 
is not to play tilted, wait until you get back into that equilibrium state, then queue up again. If you're in a tournament scenario, it's a whole nother game. You have to become so sharp and good at like realizing and then calming down and not letting it affect your play. That's another tier. I've never played a game at a pro level, so I would love to actually interview somebody and find out what the mental game looks like at that higher end for them. Number five is discipline. This comes into everything we've talked about so far. You can do anything with hard work and discipline. And that goes for inside the game, outside the game, in your real life. That discipline comes from setting goals that you really want and believe in, and then making the tough choices to work through those goals with diligent practice, research, and developing a winning attitude. So discipline sort of been what we've been talking about this whole time. It does require hard work depending on what level you're at and how badly you want to go to the next level. With that said, number six is habits you form outside of the game will directly impact your ability to play within the game. How much sleep you get directly will impact your performance. What you eat and exercise will all directly impact how well you can make decisions, how fast your reaction time is, and how sharp you are in the game. So I urge you, try and get exercise each day. Try and eat a little bit better, drink more water, and get as much sleep as possible. This is one of those secrets that is known in every single sport and competitive thing. Sleep, diet, and exercise impact you, even in gaming. Like, especially in gaming, you've got a lot of night owls who just, like, practice from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. and then lose sleep and don't know that their decision-making is impacted. Really, the more you get good rest, you eat well, you drink water, and you exercise, you'll see a big improvement in your gameplay. Number seven. Invest in gear that supports you and your goals. I've never been a gear guy. I always think that you can be really good with almost any setup, whether it's like a normal controller, a TV, etc. I think people can get very, very far with the equipment that's out there right now. But long term, if you are looking to really push to that next level, go to some tournaments, compete online, it is worth very slowly but surely intentionally investing in gear that supports you. Maybe that's a controller with some paddles. Maybe that's a 144 hertz monitor. Maybe you're at the super high end and you one day want to get like a PC to play, right? Or like, look at the event this weekend, playing on consoles in the open bracket. You know, maybe investing in a PC and, and, and practicing on a console or something like that ended up being a benefit for the console players. I don't know, but I'm just trying to say like, over time, if you are committed to this and you've got that long-term goal, there is nothing wrong with starting to accumulate gear that supports you in that process. Obviously, if you're wanting to play with some teammates, you're gonna need like a headset and an ability to communicate. That's a great investment right there, man. If you're looking for a low latency monitor, it's also something that you can invest in and get a lot of use out of for many years. So I don't think there's something wrong with looking at gear as an investment, but don't view it as a vehicle to improve. It's not like you're gonna go up an entire rank because you, you've got a nicer monitor or something like that. Will it help? Sure, but these are you know, pieces of gear that you want to build if you're planning on going to a tournament someday. Again, you can pretty much get good and be good on almost anything. So my last one here, find a team to practice with and play in competitions online and view matchmaking as a training ground. So if you are ready to start competing online, to scrim a little bit here and there, it's good to find some teammates to practice with. Solo queue will get old very quickly especially if you don't have any longer term goals beyond just getting a higher rank and matchmaking really is just that a training ground it's not some place that should be high stakes where you're continually obsessing over your in-game matchmaking rank as a complete like indicator of your skill if the end goal is to really like enjoy the competitive side of this game then finding a team to practice with is a ton of fun it's a great way to form friendships and the game becomes a totally different thing when you've got a regular team of four that you can hop on with, do call-outs, practice and play together, and improve as a unit. There's something really, really rewarding about that. How do you find a team? This one's on you. There are so many resources on the Halo Discord and on Reddit and through even matchmaking to where you can foster these things. We've talked about it in an earlier video. It's on you, though. You're never going to just fall into a group like this, or very rarely is it just going to happen to you. You're gonna have to take a step to put this thing together yourself if you really want it. And then playing in online competitions, I guarantee you after this weekend, there's gonna be so many cool opportunities to play and compete online. 
and a great way to just start practicing and dipping your foot into that world. And that eventually will let you view matchmaking as just a training ground, just a place to practice individual skills and look at replays and refine in certain areas. Then you know the true time to put in that full effort and to give it your 110% is those competitive scrims. Maybe it's some online qualifiers. Maybe you're going to go to an open bracket and win the next HCS event, man. Sky is the limit. So we're now into the mental side of things, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's other tips that you think are important, please let us know about it down in the comments. Check out the other videos in this series by clicking the playlist on screen now. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you again very soon.